Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. Happy December. Um, I, t I took those headphones out, guys. It's, it's very early this morning, so don't mind my voice. Um, I've been up in my time with God devotional, just, you know, and um, I'm coming on doing our December Bible study video. We are in Exodus. Um, so let me just kind of give you guys how it's going to go. Give me one second to go to my notes. While I'm going to my notes, you guys can be going to y'all Bible to um, read along with me. Now, where did I put this this note? Hold on, let me pause the video. Okay, guys, I found the page. So, okay, for December, our December Bible study, we're going to be reading Exodus. So, Exodus has about 40 chapters. We're going to devote 20 days this month to reading the book of Exodus. So, we're going to try to do like two chapters a day. Um, we're also reading the book of Habakkuk this month but what we're going to do for Habakkuk because Habakkuk only has four chapters we're going to be reading Habakkuk's one and two like day um, 21 and then day 22 Habakkuk three and four so all of this will be done before Christmas time Lord's will um, day 23 we'll do channel reflections Bible study reflections announcements now I've been announcing this for some time now some months now you that are familiar with the channel or have been um, you know along with us on these Bible studies this is our last YouTube Bible study underneath this playlist we've been from last year October until now so like a year and two months we've been reading Bible studies thoroughly from certain parts of the Bible but we've also been doing other Bible studies but this is the last one a part of this particular playlist so um, if you missed those videos or those announcements you can go back and check them out if I remember to I'm going to um, put what's going to be upcoming for a lot of 2020 and for what you guys can expect for the remainder of this month in the description box um, but like I said a lot of it was already pretty much announced so um, we're going to get into this today we're going to get into Exodus intro and the outline of contents which you guys can kind of see and then we'll do chapters one which is talking about the Israelites oppressed right and the birth of Moses and then Moses is going to flee to Midian so that's what we're going to be talking about today also what the Lord showed me with um, this he says many of us are actually going like this is our exodus we're exiting out of a certain season going into another season we're exiting off a certain level going into another level many of you are you're in your exodus and I feel like this was very because last year when God gave me this this same time last year he downloaded what we will be reading for 2019 before we even got into 2019 he told me what to write he told me to schedule how he wanted it to go he told me what he wanted us to read some videos I didn't know how you know I was going to do it and some things he just gave along the way and I just think God is so good because look how strategic all of that was this is the last month on the Gregorian calendar before we enter to January on the Hebrew calendar they're already in their new year as of September and this exodus is so symbolic so it's the reason why we're reading this in this month you know it could have been any other month but God is so good. So let's get into the introduction. And Lord, we ask that you bless this Bible study. Just bless us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So here's our introduction. So Exodus means exit or departure. The title of this book comes from one of the greatest miracles of God's care for his people in the Old Testament. The Israelites being free from slavery and leaving Egypt. The book of Exodus continues the story of God's people now called Israelites. And I'm going to continue reading this, but we have read and we have done some videos on Exodus in the past, even prayer points. But this will be our first time corporately coming together, doing like a Bible study on the book. So I'm really excited about this as well. So um, the story of the Israelites began with Abraham in the book of Genesis, right? Which we read about that in January. So from Moses' birth, God chose him for a special task to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the land God had promised them, Canaan. Moses is the main character and author of this book. Although he was weak in his own strength, God made him strong with his power and encouragement. God showed his power to the Israelites and the Egyptians in the ten plagues. And you can see like the chapters and verses. I'm just going to keep reading on. The last plague made it possible for the Israelites to leave Egypt. Before leaving Egypt, they celebrated the Passover. 
so the Israelites began their journey protected and guided by God in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. With Moses leading them, they crossed the Red Sea or a sea of reeds and settled in the desert at the foot of Mount Sinai for about one year. Here, God set up his covenant with the Israelites by giving them the laws for living and worshiping. The covenant between God and Israel began a relationship in which Israel was identified as God's holy nation. God gave his people the Ten Commandments, priests, and the tabernacle to help them live lives that showed they were truly God's people. So guys, here's the outline of contents. Um, chapters like 1 through 4 is going to be talking about Moses, God's leader. Chapters 5 through 13 is the contest with Pharaoh. Chapters 13 through 19 is talking about from Egypt to Mount Sinai. Chapters 19 through 24 is God's covenant and laws. And then um, chapters 24 through 40 is the tabernacle for worship. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to just give you guys a few seconds if you want to pause the video to like take notes on this. I know a lot of you, you email me, you text, or you'll leave a comment saying I enjoyed Bible study. Just help me go deeper with my Bible reading, just time with God. You know, and you enjoy taking the notes. So I am going to be sensitive and just kind of pause. Not why well, I can't pause it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all can pause it. But I'm just going to kind of leave it on here really quick unless you want to do like a screenshot or pause it so you can kind of take some notes before we actually begin to get into our Bible reading. Okay, so now let's get into um, Exodus 1. It's talking about the Israelites oppressed. So these are the names of the sons of Israel. I'm trying to focus it. I think it is, but I don't know. It seemed like it keep going out to me. So these are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin. Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The descendants of Jacob number 70 and all. Joseph was already in Egypt, right? So now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died. But the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous. Remember we read about a lot of this in other videos and in January when we did our Genesis series, right? And even if you go back, God was saying that he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply. He said it to Adam. He said it to um, Noah. He said it to Abraham. He was saying it to his covenant people. Right, But the Israelites were fruitfully multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them. Right? You know what shrewdly means, right? Or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. But don't you know that even in the midst of all of this, God had a plan? And he has a plan. And I encourage you, like, if you've ever been through any oppression, and if you're a Christian and you're in Christ, or you've just been in life, period, I'm sure that you've seen oppression and resistance and opposition, and you've been through but that didn't stop God from having a plan for you. That didn't stop God from overturning and overthrowing the plans of your enemies. That didn't stop God from remembering his covenant. You know, so let's get into 11 reading on. So this is what happened, right? So let's go back to 10. Come, we must deal surely with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor and they built python and ramses as store cities for pharaoh but the more they were oppressed the more they multiplied and spread so the egyptians came to dread the israelites and worked them ruthlessly they made their lives bitter with hard labor and brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields and all their hard labor the egyptians used them ruthlessly the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shepra and Pua, 16 right here, right? When you help the Hebrew woman in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. And what does this remind you of, guys? These verses, this verse 15 through 16. What does that remind you of? Another part in the Bible, right? Some other parts. So the midwives, however, feared God. And did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. 
Somebody say, God has a plan for me. Somebody say, God has a destiny for me. Because look, the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. See, they feared God more than, than, than this king of Egypt, than this Pharaoh. And that's the thing. Like, when you stick with God, you're going to win. When you trust God in the midst of all, everything is going to eventually have to work out for you. Everything is going to have to eventually turn in your favor. And God will honor you and bless you when you honor him and bless him. So, I want to read that again because that's for somebody. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. Somebody say there is a distinction. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So God had gave them wisdom as well. You know, he gave them, even in them reverencing him and obeying him and fearing him, he gave them wisdom as well. That's the thing that I love about God. He'll give you wisdom with what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do, when to do it, when not to do it, when to say it, when not to say it. You know, he will give you wisdom. Just like he gave them wisdom with the disciples and wisdom in the Gospels and wisdom in the book of Acts. So God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Isn't that a blessing? When you look out for God, don't you know that God will always look out for you? So then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, which means you need to kill them. You're going to kill them because the Nile is the river where different animals and creatures live. Right? But let every girl live. Okay? So, let me know what you guys got out of Exodus 1. The Israelites suppressed. What is your thoughts on this? What is your feedback? What are some times that you've not gone through this exact situation, but a time where you faced some opposition and God came through for you and he favored you? At a time when your enemies wanted to just overcome and overtake you, but God didn't let it prosper. Right, so let me know what you got out of Exodus 1. Let's now move on to the birth of Moses. So, now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Somebody say a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Now she have to have some faith to do this. Because you have to really remember like what is inside the Nile. Right? His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. And this is so beautiful. This is a word for someone. This verses 1 through 4. When you put it in God's hands. When you place them in God's hands. When you leave it in God's hands. When you entrust God with it. God is going to see you through. You know he's going to see it through. So then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe. Look how all this just was divinely set up, y'all, right? And her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. So this same Pharaoh that wanted to kill all the boys, he wants to kill them. They tried to do it with Jesus. They tried to do it with other people. His daughter sees this, this baby. This baby is Moses. He sees this. She sees this, right? So she saw the basket among the reeds. It, it, that's so, like, God calls her to be at during that particular time. So God calls, God calls um, his mom, calls his, his mom to put this at this certain time. Calls the sister to stand at a distance, see what's going to happen. Calls Pharaoh's daughter to be there at that particular time to bathe and see this baby. You, you know, God knows how to work everything out. So then, then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. Come on, God could touch the heart of anything or anyone. Even if it's for a time or season, he still knows how to do that. So this is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister 
Okay, his sister is going to be Miriam, right? We know we have a brother named Aaron and then um, Miriam. So this, his sister is Miriam. So she, of course she's much older than him, right? So then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go, see here go the wisdom again. Shall I end the favor of God, end the, this divine connection? Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Listen to this, y'all. Verse 8. Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother, which is her mom, which I believe their mom was, uh, her name is um, Jacobet. So Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. Basically, she's saying, I'm going to pay you to nurse your own baby. I'm going to pay you to take care of your own baby. But she don't know that this is her baby. This is a divine setup from the Lord. Right? So when the child grew older, which means some time had passed, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. So even though this may have been painful for her to do, it had to be something in her spirit or something in her faith to be able to do this. You know? And she did it and God worked it out for her. Talking about Moses' mom. Okay? So she named him Moses. And in the footnotes, Moses sounds like the Hebrew... Moses sounds like the Hebrew for draw out, okay? She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water, okay? So let me know what y'all thought about the birth of Moses. What did you get up out of that? Now we're going to talk about Moses flees to Midian, because now some time has passed on. So one day after Moses had grown up, which means he's, he's older now, much older, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. So you have to keep in mind, when he was much younger, his mom nursed him. You know, he was in that house, then he switched environments, and he was raised in Pharaoh's palace, raised in Pharaoh's house because of Pharaoh's daughter, right? Because he's grown, he's grown up, he's an older man now, because if you were with them, you don't have to go out to where they are and watch them. So now he's leaving, well, not yet, but he... He went out to where the Hebrew people were, where they're oppressed and going through this bondage and this hardship and labor. Okay, so he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people, glancing this way and that and seeing no one. He killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. So it had to be something in him. It had to be, y'all. It had to be something in Moses to say, even though... You know, I'm in this palace and I have I have access to these different things that comes with Pharaoh and with his daughter and being in, in the palace and all these things. Something is in my heart for my people. There was like a root inside of him because he wasn't like high five in the Egyptian. His heart was for his people because because look at what he did. You know. So he killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? You can already see he have a heart for, for um, God's people, for which is his people too. So the man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Listen what came in. Fear came in. But the Lord is still going to work this out too. Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. And you know, to be honest, I believe if he would have known who Moses truly was, he would have been killed Moses. But God kept his hand on Moses because the daughter said this is a Hebrew baby. So I'm sure he had to know that he wasn't like them, but he still, <laughs> he still couldn't control him being in that palace. He still couldn't control him having the favor of God on him. Somebody said there is a point in time for everything. That's the Ecclesiastes 3 1, right? So when Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian. Somebody say Midian. Remember that as we read because that's going to be very important. Where he sat down by a well. Now, a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the trolls to water their father's, their father's flock. Again, here's another divine setup. Some shepherds came along and drove them away. But Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock because they were women and they were going um, to do this. You know, some shepherds was trying to basically oppose them and make it kind of hard for them. But Moses being the man, right, he got up and he helped them. He came to their rescue. He helped them. And he watered their flock. So when the girls returned to rule their father, he asked them, why have you returned so early today? 
And we're going to close with this, 19 through 25. They answered, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? He asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the men who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah is going to come up again um, as we continue readings, but that's his wife, Zipporah, right? Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become an alien in a foreign land. Gershom, um, in the footnote, says, Gershom sounds like the Hebrew for an alien there. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out in their cry for help because of their slavery. Hold on. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out in their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. And you got to be encouraged by that. God is remembering his covenant with you, with people before you. He's remembering his covenant and he is concerned about you and all that concerns you. So really quick, guys, let me see what we're going to be talking about. Lord's will tomorrow. I'm going to try to come back on here. Exodus chapter three is going to be talking about Moses in the burning bush. Um, Exodus four is going to be talking about signs for Moses and Moses is going to return to Egypt. I hope that y'all were blessed by um, our December day one Bible study for Exodus chapters one and two. God bless.